Okay, Year 12s, I thought I'd take this chance to talk to you directly rather than write because I figure you might be a little bit sick of reading what I've written. I want to talk to you about a couple of things. One is, I strongly encourage you to do your homework and go and find some quotes about identity and belonging. I've put some links up on the website. Follow them through. First of all, look for quotes from people that you actually know who they are. Don't just quote some random person you've never heard of because they might in fact be famous for being terrible. So be careful of that. And secondly, go for really good quotes. This is your chance to have something in your essay that nobody else has. So go for absolute pearlers. Don't just pop in the first halfway decent thing you see with the word either identity or belonging in it. And also keep in mind that some of the best quotes might not actually have either the word identity or belonging in it, but that's a little bit trickier to find. Secondly, something that we talked about on Friday that we kind of stumbled upon but I think is really important. Both identity and belonging are really big concepts and they can be a bit kind of waffly and vague. So a way that you can make more mileage out of this and that you can actually get three distinct ideas to talk about is to look at particular identities. So you might look at somebody's language identity. You might look at their um, sexual identity. You might look at their cultural identity. You might look at their class identity. You know, are they lower class or upper class or middle class? Um, you might look at their ethnic identity, uh, their national identity, which might be different to their ethnic identity. You know, they might be an Australian whose ethnic identity is, say, Indian, but their national identity is Australian. Or they might be somebody who lives in Australia and both of their identities are primarily from somewhere else. So break down which identity it is that you're talking about. Because just as identity is made up of all of these things, you have separate identities for each of them. So you might be able to talk about how, you know, there's a conflict between, say, your sexual identity and belonging, but your national identity gives you a greater sense of belonging or how your cultural identity um, supplants your national identity. And so you can talk about these things. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. The same is true in belonging. Where do you belong? There's, of course, family belonging. There's school belonging. You might have a sense of belonging in a country. Or you might have a sense of belonging in kind of a situation. So, or, you know, a job you know, a country, a religion, a family, um, you might go from one family to another, you know, you might not belong in the family you were born in, but you might find yourself at home in the family that you make, or you might marry and find yourself, you know, in that new family. So um, that brings me on to my second point, which is all of these factors can vary over time. So you can look for people who perhaps once their identity and belonging were together and at some stage those two things were in tension with each other and conflict with each other. How time changes it. And particularly a lot of our examples are people who had a tension in their relationship but resolved that tension. And a lot of the tensions are about, you know, actually the Benjamin Law story is about sexuality, the Amy Choi story is about language and nationality, and that business about language and nationality pops up in quite a few stories, but it changes over time. They're not always in conflict. Often in this text, they make peace with it. And also, I encourage you, refer to more than one text. Remember, we've watched Bits of Forest, so we've watched all of Martin Child. Refer to more than one text. Um, the second thing that I wanted to say, and I'm just absolutely going blank here, I've talked about how you've got particular identities and particular belongings, and we've got stuff over time, that's what I wanted to talk about, is multiple identities. We thrashed this out a bit in class, but I know that not all of you are there in class. So, you can have, you know, I'm in my home at the moment, so I am in my kind of, actually no, I'm in my Mr. Omara identity at the moment because I'm talking to you being Mr. O'Mara. But when I turn this off, I'm going to take my kids to a party and I'm going to be Mark O'Mara, the Mark O'Mara as father, or qua father, if you will, um, which is a different person. Not completely different, but it is a different identity. And then when my kids go to bed, I will be a slightly different Mark O'Mara. And some of you talked about how you're a different person at work. And I've given you examples of people who sometimes you have a situation and a language issue. I told you about the person who said that they just couldn't be funny in English because they were a native French speaker. So that's a case of a language identity intersecting with a situational thing. You know, they're a perfectly funny person. It's just when the situation of being in an English-speaking country, it's hard to be that funny person. So anyhow, there's some things that I've been thinking about that I hope one or two of you will watch. Um, please bring your almanac that booklet I gave you, your question pack, a dictionary, uh, all on Wednesday, and the quotes that you look up for homework, and a preparedness to work pretty hard. This is a big task to do in only 150 minutes. Anyhow, that's it from me. Good luck.